heard the beep. That means it's working. Wait a second. <gasps> Episode oh my gosh! 200! I was going to bring poppers, like those little things. Like, you know, at New Year's, I even bought some. <laughs> we'll have Adam Wait, put music that? in. What's the noise? The do, 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 do. Glorious, glory, us episodes of the Brain Kende <laughs> podcast. You're looking extra sweet today. It must be that 200. It really is. We've had so much candy, so much, and so much brains. <laughs> I can't believe it's here. Oh my gosh, can you even? It's probably better we didn't know, like we didn't prepare because mm-hmm. it won't. It would be too much too, excitement. Too much. Yeah. Right. I mean, I I was. I mean, I had such big plans. <laughs> I have to like pick another number. That's... It's so fitting, though. We have the best intention <laughs> of being joyful. Worst follow through. <laughs> <laughs> We're just not good at uh. the thingy. Um, I will say that I went to this thing I was telling Sarah about recently. It was like about media and journalism and stuff, and like these real fancy people, mm-hmm. big wigs of all these like. Fortune 500 companies kept coming up to me and being like, I just, you know, because they knew I was on the panel to talk. Uh-huh. So then they would be like, I just heard you talking about a poop night. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to make the argument it's, that we're intellectual um, right, right. when Sarah's journalism. like, is it serrated? <laughs> and they enjoyed it though. So that is so funny. I mean, uh, you know, you know sorry, what, not sorry. Deep down, we all do. Right. There's we a reason why they call it clickbait. <laughs> right. Well, and then the weirdest part is that my friend has a poop knife. Stop. And he said he had to get a second one for his daughter. Be- like his and hers? Yeah. <laughs> they needed two poop knives well, to handle Well, who wants all- to share that shit? <laughs> Literally. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think this poop knife thing may not be that rare. We really should market this. Every word I say, I'm like, is this a poop related yeah. to... <laughs> mm-hmm. And so now we know because we talked about it. We asked the tough questions. We, we did. <laughs> I'm still sticking with my lettuce knife theory. That it should be one? Yeah, it should be like that. Soft plastic so it doesn't damage the bowl, but you know. That's such a good point. Yeah. Still. That's really funny. Oh, gosh. Well, I have some interesting <laughs> stories for you today. Okay, That good, kind of good. are about... Maybe what led you to the restroom to begin with. Okay. What you got? All on the subject of McDonald's. Okay. I love talking about McDonald's. Yeah. Have you heard? Okay. Okay. Have you heard? And now I have to pull up the actual name for have it. Have you um, heard about the lonesome loser? Oh. Yeah, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's good, Sus. Okay. Yep. 200. So, 200. Okay. Yeah. Please. That's what you get. Uh, so apparently... Mm-hmm. There is a chemical that has been identified, also found in McDonald's French fries, that has successfully grown hair follicles on the back of naked mice. What? So they're saying that naked this mice. could, right? Which is hilarious because then you have to picture like the clothed ones, <laughs> like Fievel. Right. Is that him? He's a yes, mouse, yes, right? yes. Mickey. Um. Oh my so God. it's called dimethylpolysiloxane, and it's a formula that is <laughs> now being used to stimulate the growth of hair follicles where hair, hair follicles didn't exist before. So they're saying this could be the cure for baldness. Okay. So you know every single article said McDonald's french fries cures baldness. Well, it didn't work for Trump. Oh, good point. <laughs> but... But I'm just he saying. could be the exception. There are researchers at Japan's uh, Yokohama National University, and they found this chemical. And see, they didn't find; they were just researching chemicals that didn't that did this. And yeah. all of let's like yeah. you know <laughs> make sure we're super clear here. It was like first the chemical was discovered, and then somebody else was like, "Hey, hey. <laughs> did you know that chemical is also in McDonald's French fries?" Well, what is the um what is its purpose in the fries? Do you know? Is it some sort of preservative or what? It prevents foaming of the oil in which mm. chain fries, chicken McNuggets, and fish and That's French strange. fries. I wonder why it does that and it also does... Right. That's so weird. And like what are the side effects? Like is hair 
growth a side effect or is it? I remember when I was looking into, you know, the um, lattice that you can wear yes. on your eyelashes yeah. to grow beautiful, luscious eyelashes. Uh-huh. And it had been discovered or at least so- related to so- someone who was using it for um, people dealing with chemo yeah. effects. And then now everybody's like, hey, I want me some of that like yeah. hair growth. But um, so it would seem like that would be the same type of chemical, right? I, you know what? That does or something. Sound, it does seem like it would be. Because I remember when that for, that product first came out, there was another one called Revitalash. And this guy who invented it had a wife who had breast cancer. I think it was That's breast cancer. That's what I read. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then they came out with an eyebrow one and it works with great success. Yeah. And so then it was like, oh, but huh, I bet a lot of people I wonder what's be- different about this one. It sounds, this for whatever reason sounds more, because when you think of baldness, you think of men. So yeah. maybe it's about male chemical, blah, blah, blah. Oh, good point too. That it has know. to like work with, I mean, I think they only used male mice too. <laughs> I think they even <laughs> said that male in the article. Naked yeah. mice. And, oh. and wow. Well, wait, so what would happen is these mice became really hairy on their backs yes. only? Yes. Not well, their heads? where they put it. They, oh, I oh. think they <laughs> applied it. They were like feeding it's them. It's topical. Yes. Yes. It's an oxygen permeable dimethyl polysiloxane. Oh Lord. And it says on the backs and scalps of rodents. So don't worry. They put it on their little mice head too. Oh my god. I wonder if you could, like do it in a pattern and give them a little mice mouse mohawk. Yeah, like braids or something. Yeah, like a lightning bolt. Wow. Well, hey, I'm all for those things, but wonder I guess it's really small dosage in the fries. Yeah, that's at least <laughs> McDonald's is saying so. They're like, it's really small dosage. Don't worry. I'm like, come on. That's like also gross. I'm not, I'm not worried. Have you I'm ever, s- I know you're not. <laughs> Have you ever seen the, like the time lapse of McDonald's French fries and how they'll never go bad? Yes. They never grow mold. Isn't that weird? It's terrifying. Oh. The fact that organisms that will take over anything. <laughs> They're like, are like good. nah, I'm Hard good. Pass. I'll pass. Hard pass. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so interesting how, you know, when you get the McDonald's French fries and they're piping hot. Yeah. And they're like the best things you've piping ever- Piping hot is like the oh, the yeah. exact term that the commercial would use for it too. <laughs> they're the best that you're like, holy crap, I've yes. never had anything better. But as soon as those babies get tepid, oh. they're the most disgusting thing ever. And they like shrivel up. So why, it's so weird to me that the, the taste differential between the hot and the- Room temperature fries is so great. Oh my God. I had a dream last night that I got fast food and somebody threw out the French fries and they were those thick cut steak fries and I woke up very angry. I woke up mad. Yeah. That would be a reason to be furious. Yeah. Well, what doesn't make me mad is when I go to my front door and I find my FabFitFun box. Whoa! I mean... a ton of awesome stuff for an amazing deal. Yeah. Hello. It's so fun to open up because they have full size everything and it's like a bunch of loot. So the spring box is now available and it's um on sale and I got to open mine. There was the Rachel Pally clutch which is in uh three reversible de- designs which I'm real, really I'm real cool. big into crap that like you can use on d- in different ways. Yeah. You know, save space for me. And um they also have a ton of like self-care products. They have a starry eye mask in three colors. Cute. Which is it can depuff your eyes. I don't know if you, you know that. you're into that scene. Um No, I like them puffy, Sus. Then, Come on. <laughs> well, some people don't have the problem. Oh, I do. And then um massage roller from Physique 57. Really really cool, nice stuff and it's the perfect thing for spring just like it's a new day. Open Ooh. your FabFitFun box. Um, and the total retail value of the FabFitFun spring box is over 350 bucks. And um, I'm super into the massage roller personally. Hmm. Sign up for FabFitFun today to get your spring box. The FabFitFun spring box is in limited supply and they always sell out. Use our code BRAINCANDY. You get $10 off your first box. Go to FabFitFun.com to sign up and start getting the box for our life well lived. Use promo code BRAINCANDY to get $10 off your first box. That's over $350 for only $39.99. Go to FabFitFun.com and use our code BRAINCANDY and get $10 off your first FabFitFun box. Cool. That'll make you happy. Yeah. Or a friend happy. I'm just saying. 
What? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm being selfish. Right? <laughs> I, you could get it for someone else if you're generous. Uh, let me tell you a story. Yes. Oh, I love stories. I want to know your thoughts because I'm totally fascinated by this. Um, I went tanning Mm -hmm. and there's this guy that works there named Sergio Mm -hmm. and he's fabulous and he's super nice to Lincoln because Lincoln will come with me all the time, (laughs) which is super weird. Uh, we're like a naked family. No, I remember going with my mom to get her legs waxed. Yeah, it's like and I was like no just big stand deal. there while I get. Yeah, and I was like, I can't wait till one day I'm a woman and get my legs waxed. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Not <laughs> right. anymore. Turns out. Turns out it's awful. So and then he always talks about Lincoln and and then I one day said, um, "Do you have kids?" And he was like, "No, I'm gay." And I was like, "Did you know they can have kids?" <laughs> and you know, we just joke about it. Whatever. So then one day I went in and I was all dolled up and he goes, where did you just come from church? And I was like, no, do I look like the type? And he was like, no, but I go to church. And I'm like, you do? What kind? Lovely. And he's Latino. Mm -hmm. And so I I said, let me guess, Catholic? And he goes, no, I'm evangelical. Oh, okay. Susie, so now it's now not- you got to have a full blown <laughs> conversation. Cancel your afternoon plans. <laughs> Poor guy. He was probably so regretting <laughs> bringing it up. And I go, what are you even saying? <laughs> because you are gay uh-huh. and evangelicals do not believe that it's okay to be gay. Yeah. And I thought I was like informing right. him. Like you, maybe like, you. <laughs> maybe you haven't heard. <laughs> And he was like, Word no, I know. Holy I, water. I, <laughs> cooler. <laughs> My God, that's hilarious. He goes, no, I know. I agree with them. Oh. <gasps> What did you just say? So, oh my God, talk about internal conflict. He's self-hating, right? No. So, and I'm I'm sad Sergio isn't a little bit gay. We're talking Richard Simmons He works at a tanning salon and his name is Sergio. I think he owns it even. Okay. And And based on the shoulder roll, (laughs) you like the shoulder little move shimmy you just did when you talked about him, I can... I have a perfect picture of Sergio. And he's great and my kind of gay, like super... Like Jack from Will and Grace, and but Latino, and so I was like, "Hold up!" Yes, I go. You think being gay is a sin? Oh and he said, "Yeah, you know, it's like when you go. If I were to go to make, uh, or no, he said, if I were to go to Starbucks, if I stole the cookie, I would know that was a sin." And I said, "Okay, but when you steal the cookie, there's a victim, so." You, it's a sin because you're hurting someone else. Uh-huh. And also you have the choice to steal or not steal the cookie, <laughs> right? So true. So he said, yeah. So I go, who's the victim in your in uh, oh, the crime of love? <laughs> and he said, you just know oh. when something's a sin. So obviously this led me to talk to him for a long time. I, I, a straight woman, I'm trying to convince a gay man that it's okay to be gay. Yeah. I, which it is. So then he starts saying, well, you know, when you're with the gay people, it's all about sex. And I'm like, no, it's not. Have you met lesbians? And and he (laughs) goes, the last thing they want to (laughs) do. And he goes, oh, well, no, I'm talking about gay men. And I go, no, you're talking about men. Yes. Because he's mistaking a male trait, which right. is h- hypersexuality, yes. yeah. with gay men yes. because there's no one civilizing and saying no right. to these because they're just – Because there's just, no women. Right. Oh, my God. This we is fascinating. And, it really was, Sarah. And I was like, I have to talk to Sarah because I don't know what to do. And I was like, listen, Sergio, I got to go, but I will have follow-up <laughs> questions. And I just can't believe there is a person. So I go, are you celibate then? You know, because yeah. you, because he, right? He said, "I try." Okay. <laughs> so Good. he thinks when he does have sex that it's sinful. What do That's you think of this so story? Sad. It is. I don't think. Can, oh, well, what's the long term? He says he thinks that. I mean, he are turn- you going to get married? Are you going to try to be with a woman? No, no, because he wants to please God, and he, oh, with a woman, right? Yeah. No, he's just not doing anything. And I know other people like yeah. this and I get it. Like if you think your eternal soul is on the line, mm-hmm. I totally understand why you would want to abstain, mm-hmm. but it's just fascinating to me that he thinks that he told me that he thinks he was turned gay because his dad abused him like, uh, violently. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but why did your dad do that? And he goes, cause I was feminine. 
my dad was trying to. I was like, uh-huh. so wait, so your causation there is yeah. a little off. Yeah. But I get it. Oh, I'm not going to so push, sad. but I was just like so sad about Poor it. Poor Serge. Right? I mean, this is a guy with some conflict, as you said. I feel like he needs to find one Serge. of those amazing churches that's all welcoming inclusive and, and welcoming yeah. and wonderful. There's a great television show called Hate Thy Neighbor that's on Viceland where this comedian named Jamali, he goes around to... And he looks very uh, racially um, ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous and also ethnically ambiguous as well. Uh, same thing. And religious too. He looks like he could be Muslim or he could oh, be okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. black guy or he could be from anywhere. <laughs> he could be whatever. Yeah. And I think people have a really hard time with that because he'll go into like the deep south and he'll go to um, the people who are protesting at yeah. the, uh, you know, yeah. wherever. And he interviews them, and he one of the ones that was on a couple weeks ago showed, like, the two sides of... It was called, like, Finding Love in the Deep South or something like that. I saw a clip. And it was so fascinating to hear... Well, first, to hear the people who... I think I brought this up. Like, why are they so angry? Like, there's so much hate mm-hmm. and anger. The ones who are protesting... And they just really don't want anything to go on that bum. <laughs> like they're like, that's the biggest sin on the wor- world to them. I disagree. I think that's really funny, A. <laughs> <laughs> but I see it more as a really advanced form of sexism because mm. they really don't talk about lesbians. Very I know much. that was my whole point. It's like they, they keep mentioning sodomy, 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 yeah, but, but nobody's that's okay. Because everybody's okay with the lesbies. In the case of a man and a man performing that act, one of the men takes on the role (gasps) of a woman. And that is the most disgusting thing that they can think of is for a man to want to be like a woman because we are the worst. Oh, ew. That that is what drives that. I hate that they think that. Yeah. They might not even be aware of what it is. You're totally right, Suze. But it comes down to the lowest thing you could be is a woman. Yes. And that when you're in a gay male relationship, somebody has to take that role in their mind. Yeah. Right. Oh my God. It's because they're fine with the anal when their wife is doing it. Well, that's, I mean, that's <laughs> not what these guys are saying. And as like Land and I were watching this and Land's like, oh, come on. They somebody at that table is with definitely giving it or taking it in the pooper. Pooper. <laughs> Yeah. And again with the poop on <laughs> brain candy. It always comes back it's, to that. But it oh, is man. interesting. And I really was so glad he opened up to me and shared that because sometimes you can forget that mm. there's all these different points of view, yeah. even amongst people that identify as certain things. You can't always assume, oh, I just want people whatever. to be happy living their best lives. Yeah. And like being He's true. a delight. Yeah. He but seems happy. Then I think that if there's still that feeling of like that you've sinned, like... You know how I feel about lying and how I'm like the worst at it and can't yeah. do it and how like I'm crippled with like, <gasps> uh, like I couldn't imagine feeling like I did something like carrying around that shame yeah. would be so painful. Right. And then to put yourself into an environment where you're constantly like that's getting reinforced all the time that mm-hmm. what you who you are yes. is shameful. Who you are. Yes. Identity. I, that's the word of my year is I keep thinking about that word and what uh, the way people see themselves yeah. and what makes up their identity. Yeah. I've been think, thinking a lot about it with my dad because he's on death's door and mm. he they just lifted his license. My dad was a bus driver. <gasps> and oh, no. So that's really been something I've been thinking about because yeah. he is he's saying that's he's going to keep driving, which... He absolutely he should shouldn't, and insurance won't cover it if he were to get in a wreck oh and stuff God. like that. He should not. Drive. Yeah, my mom's going to hide his keys. It's okay, okay, good. But I totally get it. Yeah. If you see yourself as something, yeah. and then that's taken away, and you're like, "Who am I now?" Right. It can feel for some people like I'm nobody. Yeah. And that's well. And a then usually, I think thing. that's when the you know, in watching this show that I was talking about before, hate thy neighbor. Most of the people who were re- leader, leaders of these really angry, um, I would almost call them hate groups, have a history of alcoholism or they were like, I was a drug addict. They're very often born again. And I could see that being replaced 
with the new thing. Absolutely. Addiction transfer. Yes. You're just addicted to a new it's thing. It's a new thing and you're Absolutely. just not calling it addiction because there are no drugs and needles and yeah. booze. And yes. there's no hangover. We're talking deep today. We sure are. I like it. I do too. This but is the brain You never and the know candy. when there might be poop knife coming out <laughs> anyway though. Um, oh gosh. Yeah, and this in this guy Sergio, he said that his best friend um, like he kept saying, my best friend died of AIDS, like to give him cred. Oh, like, it's like, like that's like, listen, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but I just bring that up to say that at the end of the episode, we have somebody coming on who, um, is living with AIDS mm-hmm. and she's one of our patrons and she reached out to me and was telling me her story, which is so fascinating. And it's, you know, we don't think a lot about the AIDS epidemic as much as we used right. to at least. And HIV, because it seems like we got a handle on that. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. everybody seems fine. Take your pills, whatever. Mm -hmm. But we also then don't learn very much. We don't hear the personal stories as much. Yeah. And so she's really cool and has a very rich, vibrant life and wanted to share a little bit about her story. So I was happy to have her on. So she'll, she'll be on later. And I'm I'm loving that, and I love our listeners. Come on, yeah, we have some really cool people that I reach love out. And that I'm they like, want to share, yeah. Um, you know what else I love? Great skin. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> I can't get enough of BioClarity, as you guys know, uh, and it supplies the clear skin that I so crave. Mm-hmm. Your skin is looking really nice. Thank you so much, and it has ever since I started using it two yeah. years ago. Because before that, yeah, no good. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you try things and they work, but then they irritate your skin. Or they're soothing, but they don't work. Mm -hmm. So this is the perfect way to get both done. Or they're like chock full of chemicals and gross stuff. Nope. Yep. I don't need that. Don't like that. And this is a great routine. I'm into routines this year. I'm all about like checking the box, checking the box. This is a part of my routine. Packed with clarifying botanicals and Floralux, delivered straight to you, to your door, 100% vegan. And if you want to start a healthy habit and get glowing, clear skin, just go to bioclarity.com. Our listeners will get first month for only $9.95 plus free shipping. It's a $20 savings and it comes with a 100% risk-free money-back guarantee. But you need to enter our code BRAINCANDY. That's bioclarity.com and enter our code BRAINCANDY. All right. Anyway... I wanted to tell you a story. Yeah. Oh, I just did. I just dominated. You tell me something. Oh, okay. I feel like well, I, just I just did the whole like Sergio. Li- well, that's, I yeah. love your stories. And these, so far, these ones are so good today. I got one I could just like throw in that's just like a real quick little yeah. thing I read. Sure. Uh, so there's a school in California. I think it's in Oak Meadows. It's called Oak Meadows Elementary School. Okay. They have banned the dictionary because of bad language in it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> they will. Is Linda in charge? Is right? she superintendent? Linda is superintendent. <laughs> they said She's they on the school board. They will determine the extent to which the dictionaries support the curriculum, the age appropriateness of the materials, and its suitability for the age levels of the students. Oh, for fuck's so sake! So apparently, <laughs> having, right? Apparently, having a dictionary because the word that they really didn't like was like fellatio and things like that, and it was at an elementary school. Where, what state? Like, California. What? I knew you were going to be shocked with that. But it's in the red part. The Menfee Union it's School District. It's in the District. Arkansas part. I right. think so. It's got to be. Look up Me- M-E-N-I-F-E-E. Menfee, Menfee, whatever that, that is. That ain't San Francisco, San no. Diego, or LA. <laughs> That's what I know. And it says the California Department of Education said it had no authority over what the school does with its dictionaries because they're not <laughs> considered instructional material. Here's so my they favorite can totally part. Ban that. My favorite part is them <laughs> thinking that that will, in some way, right. preserve the sanctity <laughs> of the lexicon of right. their student body. Right. What? What is happening? You know they have phones, right, guys? Uh huh. And also mouths that can speak words and like suck dicks. <laughs> <laughs> my flesh. Yeah, <laughs> is that the verb form? I think it is. Or fillet? Fillet. I think that's it. Yeah. We could be wrong. It could be pronunciation. I mean, thing. not that classy about it. Yeah. But oh I just my couldn't God, believe that. Oh my God, Sarah, that is bonky. Yeah. And it's oh. A, that, oh my gosh. It just I love is... this. I love <sighs> unpacking taboo 
like, because wh- my son is five and he's really embracing that poo poo humor now. Yeah, like, they have to. Yeah, they're he's starting to realize that poops and butt are you know just like us. Things you. that are taboo that you're not supposed to talk about are, are funny. funny. Yeah, and so it's like the Freudian first stage of comedy. Yes, and I encourage all of it. <laughs> it's just I I knock, knock, who's fine. There? <laughs> He's going to love that joke. That's the problem, though, is that I'm just like, I don't mind if you make poop jokes, but they better be funny. Yeah. <laughs> that, better be good. He's like, poo, poo, booty, body. I'm like, that's, that's not, not a funny joke, joke dummy. <laughs> One time last week, I called him Dingbat, and he goes, can you not call me that? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing, Dingbat? And he's like, can you not call me Dingbat? He probably doesn't even, he probably thinks it's worse than it is. T- tell him to look it up in the dictionary. Ah, yeah, we don't ban it in our house. I am so fascinated by that though because Oh my god, I love it. Who I would love to talk to who is the person that was like, I've got it. Some annoying mom. And mom. I know, you know it is. And speaking of things that are getting banned and outraged mothers who are outraged. Yeah. Did you see the outrage over the new um P- Peter Rabbit movie? Yes. What's the actual F? Right? So dumb. Okay, let's it talk is about it. The dumbest thing. There's Please tell new- me you agree with me. Um, what? <laughs> okay. Okay. Are we in a fight? Here's the scoop. If you don't know, Peter Rabbit, great, uh, literary history. Yes. Now there's a film out. Beatrix Potter. Yeah. But, uh, there's a scene in the film where Mr. McGregor, uh-huh. uh, has an allergy to blueberries, blueberries or some form some of berries, berry. some berry. And they're trying to outwit Mr. Mm-hmm. McGregor, and they shoot the blueberry into his mouth, and he goes into like anaphylactic shock and has to use an EpiPen. And a lot of people with kids with allergies think it's not funny to make jokes about stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And this is something kid- people don't take seriously anyway. So now it's like making light of it again. So they're mad. The only thing I could think of is if parents would be angry that maybe some child who's mad at their child would use whatever they're allergic to, to try to get back at them. Like, if you don't like the Absolutely. kid who's allergic to peanut butter, you... Yeah, it's not funny. Like, That's scary to me. I understand that, but... But what? <sighs> I just... I think that... Have a conversation with your kids. Just tell them, like, you know, I don't know. That'd be nice. Also, it was not in the book. Well, yeah. I know. So this like, isn't canon. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I felt like... There, there's no need for that to be a part of the film. So I don't understand. Given what I know about bureaucracy in mm-hmm. companies, I cannot believe things like this happen. Right. Because of how you, you know, like even Phil Rosenthal's like innocent show about food and travel. He's like, it's notes from, you know, you always oh get God. notes from the network and yeah. can you change this? And you can, how did this scene? Everyone's like, yep, we're fine with the EpiPen humor. <sighs> I don't know. I don't get how that happened. I think they're being too sensitive. Do you? Yeah. Hmm. And when I saw the mom talk about it, I'm like, ugh, you're oh, exactly maybe that's who the I problem. pictured. And she was <laughs> it's like, ugh. Why? Because she's, she's just the same like too dictionary earnest. banning lady. It's the same lady, I'm sure. Okay, but maybe what about the principal? Do you think the principal is silly? What, if they're being uh using The principal that the woman was arguing, even though she's annoying? Like, do you think she has a point or you think uh, movies are designed to be silly and movies funny? Are, and also uh, movies are designed to be silly and funny. And like, if you want to be outraged at that, then how come nobody's outraged at Beauty and the Beast? The fact that their beast is stealing her away from her father, locking her up in a dungeon. Basically, it's it's all uh, uh, domestic violence and nobody's outraged. There's nobody like protesting at Disneyland saying we shouldn't have Beauty and the Beast on anymore because this glorifies domestic violence. So are you telling me there are protests going on for well, this? Well, I mean, allergy there are thing? angry groups of parents. Yeah, but there's angry people. I don't think there are angry groups of parents at things that maybe we should be angry about. What if there was a character in a wheelchair and they like pushed her down the steps? Would you think that was funny? No. <laughs> so where do you draw well, the line? It depends. What kind of movie are we talking? Just and like Peter Rabbit, one of the people in it, Mr. McGregor's in I, a wheelchair. You would have to ask somebody in a wheelchair. If they thought that was funny. No, I'm asking you because you're saying it's funny about the EpiPen. Well, it's the person in a wheelchair, a bad guy? Yes, it's Mr. McGregor. He's in and a he's wheelchair And he's like a bad now. guy? And he he's did the bad same. things. Well, okay, then you know what? He's a bad guy. 
Get rid of him however you got to. I don't Whoa. know. Whoa. Okay, so what? Should I, like, be more uh, forgiving of somebody in a wheelchair if they murder somebody? He's in a wheelchair, guys. Who did he murder? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying, is, is he a bad guy? Like, how bad is bad? And what, what are we in the cartoons? I mean, come on. We got Bugs Bunny who's blowing up... Or, or Sarah. The Roadrunner who's blowing up the coyote with TNT, or vice versa, and that's okay. Sarah, first of all, this is not a cartoon. But it's... And it is sort of a cartoon. It's like an animated. Mr. McGregor is a real actor, man. I don't know. It blurs the lines a bit. Maybe that's the problem. If they were all animated, would it be an issue? It would be less of an issue for me. Okay. So maybe that's it. The fact that he went into anaphylactic shock. Is that the right word? Yes. And had to use it. That is pretty clinical and uh, realistic. What rather was he than doing like to that rabbit that made him deserve that. But it's a rabbit. That's what I'm saying. The whole thing is ridiculous. They were <laughs> arguing over what a cartoon rabbit is doing. Yeah. He's but- a talking cartoon rabbit. The end. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's fantasy. Like Yeah. If I mean, you don't think your kids I should see, go to it, don't I let do- your kids go to it or or but part of why they're angry kids. was that th- there really wasn't any way for them to know that this was in the oh, movie. Oh, like came out of nowhere. And they're in the film, and then they're sitting there with their peanut butter kid, uh-huh. and they're like, "Oh God, Mr. McGregor's going to die." You know, I'm I trying get to think it. of like another example of where like we were just fine with it, <laughs> and it was like, you know, mm-hmm. like nobody was angry that they. What, I don't know, like maybe short-term memory loss with Dory in Finding Nemo. Mm-hmm. Were there any parents who had children who got, I don't know, concussions and lost their memory who were like, I feel like you're using this as a Maybe if that's what caused, maybe if her enemy used it to kill her, <sighs> that might be a problem. <sighs> Tweet at Susie on why I'm right. <laughs> that, no, they will. I know. I can hear no, them now. No, they're going to say you're Sarah, right. you're they're, right. Everybody's no, too sensitive. It's definitely going to be them against me on this one. I'm not saying... Everybody's going to be on your side for this. It's, I'm not, it's not even my side as right. much as I just understand... Yeah, where they're the, coming from. Yeah, the point of view of those parents. Because if yeah. I had a kid with severe... And maybe because I don't have a kid, I don't understand how it is to have to like have that conversation and do I, all that. I, because I have heard like Adam Carolla joke about how... like. Whenever there's the um, like the, the illegal Mexican workers that he hires to work on his landscaping, and he'll be like, "Hey, you guys want lunch?" Nobody's like, "Yes," but I have a peanut allergy, or "Yes, I want gluten free." <laughs> they just say yes. But I don't think I think that that's a false mm-hmm. premise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do hear that we're having more allergies and things like that because of like there's a whole reason as to why in the United States we have more allergies and things like that, and like the we're missing a lot of gut bacteria that helps fight that. And yeah. a lot of that even comes from a, a, a lot of cesarean sections. Yeah. And we're missing a very important, um, what do they call them? They're like bio... Probiotic? No, there's no. another word for it. It's called like a bio something. I can't Binome even... or something. Yeah, it's something yeah. like that. Some This was not in my notes. I'm just, this is just yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. off the top of my head. But there is a whole, you know, now we're going into... Um, the Amazon and like looking at the bacteria that grows on the backs of sloths because it's some of the most unique and diverse bacteria everywhere or anywhere. And maybe that can cure the things like peanut allergies. So yeah. Well, in the meantime, don't go to see Peter Rabbit. Yeah, I guess. Or do what ifs. I wanted to tell you a story about, um, the history. (laughs) I can't wait. (laughs) Post-it notes. The question mark. Tea kettles. <laughs> it's better. You're going to love it. Why movie theater floors are sticky. <laughs> People love my history of. I know. They really do. I want to add music for those segments. Like Susie's annoying. You know like how they do the more you know and it's like. <laughs> right. Yeah. The history of the waterbed. <laughs> oh, hey, that's cool. See? I'm into it. I knew you would be. Yes. Okay. so i love this because i'm a child of the 80s and i'm the youngest of five and in about 1988 two of my siblings got water beds and so we were like in pittsburgh right it's freezing what does that have to do because the water gets cold 
They didn't mention that. I mean, we had heating in our house. Oh, my dad did mention that when he was telling me stories of his water bed and how it was in the basement. It was always freezing, and he oh. never thought about that. Oh, wow. So maybe you had heat, and it was fine. Yeah, I told, that was did not come up. Okay. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, whenever I saw the headline, I was like, okay, I'm in. Go. I'm in deep. <laughs> so the water bed, uh-huh. uh, the original sort of like, or, you know, what did you call that, like, where it's just like a basic, not real prototype. Like our, yeah, like, prototype. Yeah. Was from the 1800s. It what? was called the hydrostatic bed for invalids. And it was to reduce bed sores. Oh. And it was very like, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, where it's just like very simple yeah. and um, just designed for that purpose. But then fast forward. What did they use as a material? Well, that's the thing. That it was rubber. That they used. And eight, what year? In, it's at the 1800s, so maybe oh my it was gosh. in the okay, late yeah. industry. But uh, fast forward to the 1960s, then. that's when they invented vinyl. Oh. And that's when they were like, okay, now it's leak proof. Let's get this party started. <laughs> <laughs> this hydro party started. The guy that was doing it was going to school and tried all different things. Like he tried a bed of... Uh, Cornstarch in it, uh, Jello. Cornstarch in it? Yeah, like he was trying all Ooh, these different. That would make a weird noise. I don't like that. Yeah, Ugh. he tried all these different things and then settled Jell-O? on water. And um, okay, so then they started mass producing it, and they would run these ads that was like, "Water beds make two things better, and sleep is the other one." But really. <laughs> That's what I want to know. No, it does not make if doing it, did, it better. If it did, they wouldn't be outdated now. People would still be yeah. buying up those water beds. I mean, you got to get a pretty good rhythm going. <laughs> the motion of the ocean. Yeah, and don't switch it up. <laughs> you got to wait for the water yeah, to like, it's like catch up. Yeah, like a trampoline up. whenever yeah. you like Yeah, do it's, it's like st- double bounce. <laughs> double bounce. So... Um, it peaked in 1987 when one out of five beds purchased Stop it. was a water bed. Stop. And that is crazy. <laughs> one out of five? Yeah. How many flooded basement or bedrooms did we have during right. the 80s and 90s? Well, and that's the theory for why they went out of style was, and I remember like you had to bring a hose in from Oh, outside that's such a bad idea. Into the house and put it on the spout of it and fill up this bed Mm-mm. And then, like, it, if it sprung a leak or whatever, then you would you could flood your house. Forget it. <laughs> all of my instincts say that's a, a, an awful idea. Right. And, um, you know, this sort of, like, tantalizing <laughs> element turned out that really wasn't what people were buying them for because this, you know, in the suburbs, like my family, yeah. they just thought it was cool to have, yeah. like, this funky... Water bed. Did you ever get to sleep on your? I never beds? slept on it. I sat on them, yeah. and one was like you could get different levels. Like one was like super <laughs> loosey goosey waves, yeah, and the other one was very firm. Is it like the fill factor? Like no, I you think you. It? Well, some of them have compartments, so then that oh, lessens the waves. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> You're oh, learning so much. I am. I really am. I'm like I can visualize it. But I don't know if people thought like these were good for your back or what they thought. They seem terrible for your back. Yeah. It seems like sleeping on an air mattress. It does. And those are awful. Maybe they thought it was soothing, like yeah, I don't know, like a baby. Motion of the ocean, baby. Yeah. But anyway, now it's down to 5% of beds purchases, which still seems that like a lot. That still seems high. But that must be for like people with medical stuff. I don't know. Yeah. There's got to be a reason. Yeah. And uh, But now, and here's sort of the the finale of the waterbed history, is that they are still used in abundance for cows. For cows? It prevents the bed sores, same oh. as the 1800s. And... That a happy cow makes happy meat, <laughs> happy right. milk. I wonder if they have like uh, those, what are they called? Velvet like posters on the wall and like some <laughs> lava lamps too for the cows. <laughs> right. Like I picture like a whole 70s. Like if you're going to do the water bed, you might as well give them a shag carpet. That is really funny. Yeah. I can totally picture like it. Like black light. Ball. It's totally black light in the barn. 
Right. Oh, God. So there's there you go. You guys can tell that at your next cocktail party. Well, I tried to tell the people in my uh, clinic at work the history of the paperclip and the um, uh, Swiss Army knife. Nobody seemed very impressed. What? Remember how we were talking about which came first, Swiss Army knife or the paper yeah. clip, and it's the Swiss Army knife, yeah. and you'd never guess that? Yes. They were not. They didn't seem impressed at all. Oh, my God. Our parlor games are now like... I know. I was like, all right, well, the Brain Candy Brainiacs liked it, so... wonder if they did. They were like, when am I ever going to need this? <laughs> and I was like... Oh, well, I really, I, I, after all these episodes, 200 episodes, <laughs> yeah. I still don't know what they like. Who knows? I know what I like. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they can can it. They totally. But I mean, (sighs) there you go. Tell me if you tell that story because I think it's a crowd pleaser. If you, you know, whatever. Um, You know what else is a crowd pleaser? Single swag. We love single swag because we feel like it's a party every month when we get this big box full of goodies. This month I got those cookie crisp. No, they're called cookie chips that I then ordered on Amazon a million times because they're so yummy. There's this really cute book about, it's called How to Sew a Button, and it's like all the stuff your grandmother used to know. There's this really nice liquid lipstick set. Just tons of full-size accessories, makeup, stuff that you would be excited to get. And we always say, forget it, if you're not single, it doesn't matter. But if you are single, it's really nice to get a box full of stuff and treat yourself. Um, Yeah, because you got to take care of yourself first. And the best part is Single Swag gives our listeners their best offer, which is 20% off. So if you go to singleswag.com and use our code, which is brain candy, you get that 20% offer. And you'll be so excited when this stuff comes to your door. You'll love it. Anything you want to add before we uh, our guest Jennifer comes Ooh, on? Ooh, I think I'll save it for next time. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, there's really no good way to celebrate 200 episodes, but I just say thank you to yeah. the listeners for all of their downloads. Yes. I hear some people are starting back over at one. Oh, my God. Can you believe that? I don't encourage that. <laughs> no, you should do it. Start at like 56. That's what we really like, God. Into. We hit our stride. Hit our stride. <laughs> yeah, thanks to all of you that subscribe. And like maybe in honor of our 200th episode, you could like tell a friend. Yeah, tell two friends. Yeah. Or 200 Tweet friends. at us and subscribe and leave I reviews. I love all the things you guys have been tweeting at us. I yeah. will tweet back. Yeah, you, sometimes you do. I, I, I noticed that. I've been, I've been in the mood to tweet back <laughs> to people recently. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, thank you all. Okay, let's welcome our guest, Jennifer Vaughn, who also has a YouTube channel you should check out where she documents her journey um, and her life living with AIDS. Welcome to the show. All right, Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being on with me. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored. We have a lot to talk about. Here's what I want to know, because you sent me a message through our Patreon, which is where all of our sort of challenge content lives, and you sent me a link to your Survivor audition. Is that our initial contact? Was that how we started talking? I included that, and I included my first story video that I put up on YouTube. Yeah, I think I included that one as well. Yes. Okay, so tell me about that, like what your sort of story is and what you were sharing. Okay. So, um, (laughs) deep deep breath here. I'm a 47 (laughs) year old single mom with three kids and, um, I was just kind of living my life. I've been divorced for about, um, almost eight years back in, um, 2016, early 2016. And I was dating a man from Quebec. We have a long distance relationship. He happened to be out here during the winter while, um, um, while all of this happened and I started to get sick And it was just a lingering kind of cold and flu thing that just wasn't getting better. And um, I did to the doctor several times, and it just was getting progressively worse. Finally, it got to a point where the fevers were just increasing so much, and um, I had to go to the doctor again. And by the time it got to the point where I was having night sweats and all that, um, the the doctor's office that I had been seeing, and it was several different doctors. It was kind of like a doc in the box. They sent me to an infectious disease doctor. 
Yeah, and so, yeah, looking back, it, it all made sense why, uh, well, it didn't really make sense, but all looking back, I had, like, so many symptoms that led up to my diagnosis. Nobody caught it because I think it was because so many different doctors saw me, but um, regardless, mm-hmm. they sent me to an internal medicine doctor that day, or, yeah, internal medicine, and um, he was really concerned, and he'd asked me several times, you know, if I had a cough, and I kept, I'm like, he was on to something. And I it was like, no, I don't have a cough. No, no, not a cough. He said, oh, I have a sore throat. And I, I didn't at the moment, but I had over the last few years, had several sore throats that didn't ever add up to strep. And it wasn't three hours later I got the call from the doctor, and it was so unexpected. And I was, I was truly very ill at that moment, too. And he said, I'm really sorry. I don't, like, he was... Like, I don't feel like he's ever even given this diagnosis many times. It was oh like, he was God. young, and he said, I really don't really know how to tell you this, but you've tested positive for HIV. And, I mean, I am not kidding when I say my whole world stopped. It yeah. stopped on a dime. My mind's just racing. Yeah. How? Did, what? Like, how did this get in me? Like, what is going on? So that was the beginning of it. Um, I ended up with a diagnosis of AIDS about a week later. And all I yeah. could think of in my head was, I had sex, and now it's killing me. Like, Whoa. how did this happen? Like, why am I being, like, punished for having sex? I mean, basically, that's how I felt. When your doctor first said the those words and your world stopped, what was mm-hmm. your brain thinking? What What were your first thoughts? Um, I, it was just shock and complete... <sighs> I, I can't, it's just, it's like everything went black. Like, mm. it's just like, it's the worst news I think I could have ever heard. And it was, I wasn't going into tests for HIV. I remember when the doctor asked, um, can we throw in an HIV test? That right. comment went in and out of my brain in a second. I thought we were onto something else. Like, I was like, yeah. oh yeah, go ahead. Like, I just, that's, so I wasn't focused on waiting for that result at all. So when that came back, it was like, my brain just couldn't process like what and then then the questions in your head just start swirling where did it come from oh my god did i give it to anybody yeah am i gonna die can i work anymore am i gonna raise my kids oh my gosh did this diagnosis affect how you see yourself or your identity um uh, yes and no yeah for sure of course for a while i thought that wherever i went people would look at me and know immediately i thought you know um everyone's going to know it. They're going to treat me differently. I'm going to be this, like, you know, um, person they're going to avoid. And, I mean, I'm very public, so I kind of took that by the reins and just said, screw that. I'm not going to let anybody feel that way. I'm going to, you know, overcome that and just be super open about it so that no one has to feel weird. And maybe they still will will feel weird, but whatever. It's their problem. So um, it's been really empowering in a really weird way. So it's been definitely, and that's, I know that I'm not the norm for that. A lot of people live with this and they're very, very um, private about it. And they deal with a lot of shame and they deal with a lot of like Mm. worry of stigma. And then there's a lot of people that live with it. They're very okay with it, but they prefer to keep it private because they understand that society has so much stigma about it and they don't want to deal with that. What is the worst thing somebody could say if they're talking to you when they find out? Well, I, on my YouTube channel, of course, I get, you know, they say whatever they want when they want to say it. So I've heard it all. But um, to my face, it's yeah. really funny. And it's not it's not all that awful. It's just that people will come up to me and do the real, like, they touch me on the elbow. Well, you look really good. Okay. You look healthy. I'm like, I'm fine. Like, I am. A, and I always say this. I get so tired of hearing myself say it. But I feel 100% like I always did. Like, I don't feel any different. I'm back to normal. And when I was sick, of course, I felt awful. And I thought that I would feel sick every day with HIV. I thought, oh, I'm going to, this is part of the punishment. I'm going to be sick all the time. And that's not the case. I feel fine. I do everything I've always done. And I feel totally fine. Because it's barely in me. I mean, it's just not in me. It's, I mean, it is, but, it's, you know, hardly there. And what's so the it's scoop not doing like? Anything to me. What do they say does the future hold for you? The future holds that I will still have the same life expectancy. And, wow, uh, isn't like, that amazing? You know, oh, yeah. Yeah, my doctor told me that, my, my HIV doctor that I finally got. She's like, I know a man who's like 80 years old. He's, you know, snowboarding or skiing. And he's <laughs> doing great. And like, don't worry. or Because, I mean, I remember walking into her office and just feeling like she's going to be telling me, you know, you probably got about five to eight years. You know, I really was 
certain that I would not have a long life. Yeah. And I didn't think I'd be able to work. I mean, I work with children. I'm a substitute teacher. I thought that would be an issue. Yeah. That has not been an issue at all. I want to know what else you want people to know that they probably maybe oh. don't. Okay, you can recover from AIDS. I'm proof positive that is wow. something that can happen. People don't realize that. Um, HIV positive mothers can have HIV negative babies. It's not what? a hard thing. They take medication. Oh, yeah. This is not big science anymore. This is just like every day I HIV no positive idea. women can have HIV positive. As long as they're, they're on their medication and the babies, I believe, take something for the first like six weeks, mm-hmm. um, it's like less than 1% chance that they'll get it. It's really and, – and, I, I'm pretty sure about that. It's like That's really awesome. low, but it's, yeah, I'm, it's amazing. Um, HIV and AIDS are two separate things. A lot of people get that confused. So um, I will always have HIV, but I do not have AIDS anymore, but I did at one time. And you cannot give AIDS to anybody. You can only give HIV to somebody. Um, yeah, my life expectancy is the same. Yeah. You are blowing my <laughs> mind. Blowing. <laughs> yeah, AIDS is not, AIDS is not contagious. It's not. HIV is contagious. Only, I knew nothing. You know, through sexual means. Yeah. Yeah, it's not at all. And, you know, it's funny. I know a girl who was just um, diagnosed, and she said her family was afraid to eat after her. And I said, oh, my God. <laughs> what? The doctor told you. Do you not know that it's not a saliva? But then a lot of people get confused because they see me take the or quick test, which is testing your saliva. That's yeah. testing for the antibody only. It's just for the antibody. There's not HIV in my saliva. It's just the antibody. Interesting. So people get they get confused with that. So, um, but yeah, those those are some really important points that I don't think a lot of people know. And so I kind of have to like, you know, I talk about that on my channel a lot about those. And um, a lot of people think the boy that the boy <laughs> the man that gave it to me had to be black. He was not. He was white. People so, you know, say it that. It, they do. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Oh, damn. Um, yeah. And I, I said in one of my videos that um, I was misdiagnosed for a long time because I don't look like somebody that would have HIV. Yep. That comment has stirred a lot of people. And st- statistically, I don't. I don't. And I'm going to stand by that. I don't um, look like somebody that would have it. And I don't mean that I, you know, physically they look at me, but I am a white female. I'm not a gay man, and that's I'm statistically I'm very low on on who would have HIV. So, you know, they know I'm a mother of three. I'm single. You know, I'm a teacher. I'm a college graduate. Maybe all of those things blur the doctor's vision. I don't know, but yeah. they didn't. It didn't cross their mind to have me test for it, and I don't really know why. But it 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 should have been tested for for sure. Yeah, and, and, and I'm guilty of it too. I should have pushed it, but in my mind, I thought that I was. Yeah. You know, completely invincible. Didn't think it would ever enter my world, even though I was with somebody who was high risk. And I did find out who gave it to me. That's all in my channel and oh all my that God. good stuff. What, tell people where they can watch your videos. What's your channel? Yeah. So my channel is called um, Jennifer's HIV Positive Life. And um, <laughs> or is it Jennifer's Positive HIV Life? My gosh. Hey. <laughs> um, we'll hunt you uh, down. Don't worry. Look up HIV. If you look up HIV on YouTube, my videos pop up. Like, it's, like, pretty much, like, you know. You're running the show over there. Okay, you know what I have to ask you. What do you keep in the trunk of your car? (laughs) (laughs) And I've got a really good answer. Good. Because I skate and I surfboard. So I have two big tubs, one for all my surfboard junk and one for all my skateboard junk. And then I have this thing hanging from the back of my car since my kids were little that has a bunch of clear pockets in it. And it hangs from the back seat. I have a minivan. And I cannot tell you how many people have walked by and seen that thing with all my little like, band-aids, you know, my sunscreen, oh my all these God. different things. And like, where did you get that? And I know I got it from some magazine. But anyways, <laughs> and I've got a lot of towels and clothes to change into after I serve. So oh, I thank you so it. much. So You're fun. the best. And thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Susie. <laughs> have a great day. Okay. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Babes and Babies, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It. 